In the privacy of his bedchamber, the gloomy Philip II reflected on the state of his soul before the tabletop of the seven deadly sins. The painting was still in the king's bedroom the day he died. A large circle representing an eye features where the pupil should be an image of Christ emerging from the tomb. Underneath are inscribed the words, Beware, beware, God sees. Gluttony. This overweight character served by his wife and imitated by his son has spent his whole life eating. Through gluttony man loses all sense and understanding. Anger. Two men argue in front of a tavern and a woman tries to separate them. He wishes to speak in an offensive way, to strike and stab. He's consumed by the fire of impatience. Sloth. A man seated in a comfortable chair neglects his ecclesiastical duty. Faith appears to him in a dream as a nun calling him to prayer. Sloth distances man from God and encourages him to sleep. A biblical inscription deplores man's blindness and invites him to meditate on the four last things as understood by Bosch and his contemporaries. Death, followed by the resurrection and the last judgment, which will lead us, according to our acts, to heaven or to hell, where each sin is carefully labelled. The Spanish art collector Felipe de Guevara wrote, These are pictures which have as their subjects the habits and passions of the soul of man. But wherever you are, think of the last four things, and you shall sin no more. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, bienvenue à Notre Dame. Welcome in Notre Dame. The first question, of course, is are you ready for the exhibition? No, we are not ready. Nous ne sommes pas prêts parce que nous, en, nous sommes en train de travailler. Il faut encore beaucoup de travail au milieu. We're still working on the lighting of the works. And yes, everything will be ready. And also all the promised pieces will be here, ready before the opening. L'ouverture, samedi matin, à 10h, en présence de Sa Majesté, la Reine Béatrix. At the Boyman's Museum in Rotterdam, there's an atmosphere of excitement. After five years of scientific research and considerable diplomatic effort to acquire the Bosch paintings, Chris Durkin and the administrators wait for the Queen of Holland to officially open the exhibition. In a strange way, Queen Beatrix is related to Hieronymus Bosch. Today is the opening. And uh, it's the opening in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen. And what's absolutely fantastic is that uh, probably Her Majesty is the closest of all of us to Bosch. And you know why? Because the illustre Ons Lieve Vrouwen Broeders Genootschap, it was one of the first melanges of different beliefs with 40 brothers who were absolutely very, very rich and very important. All the Orion Nassau's were member of the royal brothers of the illustre Onze Lieve Vrouwen Broeders Genootschap. And by descent, the Queen of Holland is a royal brother. Despite the events of September the 11th, the show drew a huge crowd. Almost 300,000 people over a period of two months. It left its mark on the history of Hieronymus Bosch exhibitions. It highlighted the social context in which the painter created his works and demonstrated the creative influence of Bosch on contemporary art. It's a sort of paradox in the work of Bosch. On the one hand, it's very unbegrijpelijk, and on the other hand, is it iets wat door bijna alle mensen op de een of andere manier direct begrepen wordt in zijn onbegrijpelijkheid. In ieder geval trekt het mensen aan. Gewone 15e eeuwse zeg christelijke West-Europese schilderkunst mag voor een Japaner of een Hindoe of iets 
misschien ver van hem afstaan, maar om de een of andere reden schijnt mijn bos altijd te begrijpen. Hetzelfde is eigenlijk dat jeugd, mensen die nooit in een museum komen, voelen zich wel aangetrokken door het werk van Jeroen Bos. In 1516, Hieronymus van Aken, distinguished painter, is dead. The archives record what followed with typical Dutch precision. For the funeral on this ninth day of the month of August, to Willem Hammeker, dean, the sum of one and a half stavers for having sung mass and half a staver for his presence. For the deacon and subdeacon, one staver each. To all the others, priests, singers, bell ringers, organists and grave diggers, half a staver each. Eigenlijk weten we over zijn dood zelf helemaal niks. Wat we wel weten is dat op een gegeven moment wordt gezegd dat hij dood is en dat er een uitvaart voor hem gehouden is. En daar zijn betalingen voor bekend. En nog wat later wordt zijn vrouw aangeschreven met uh, de, de benaming weduwe. Maar over zijn dood zelf is weinig bekend. Het enige is weten we dat in die tijd nogal veel doden zijn gevallen aan een besmettelijke ziekte in de stad. Before lapsing into oblivion, Hieronymus Bosch had a decisive influence on certain painters of the following generation. No better example can be found than this panel by Peter Bruegel the Elder, painted in 1562, The Triumph of Death. Fifty years after the death of Hieronymus Bosch, the Spanish Dominican priest Fray Jose de Siguenza wrote, His paintings are books of great wisdom and artistic value. If there are any absurdities here, they are ours, not his. And to say it at once, his themes are a painted satire on the sins and ravings of man. In Bosch's art, the dying Middle Ages flared to a new brilliance before disappearing forever.